Should you get an extended warranty for your Range Rover or your Land Rover? In this video, I'm gonna talk about exactly what you need to know if you're in that market. Hey everyone, it's Emeka here from Driven Hard, and uh, today we're talking all about your vehicle protection plan or your extended warranty coverage. And I'm gonna be talking about which one I just purchased for my 2019 Range Rover and walk you through some of the reasons, and there was a big one on why I went with, well, what is considered the Land Rover branded warranty over some of the third-party ones that a lot of the dealerships might try to sell you. So first off, let's run down the scenario. Should you actually be looking at getting an extended warranty? If you're somebody like me and you drive you know, 30,000 kilometers a, a year, uh, you're gonna run over your kilometers for your lease fairly quickly. Um, I have an open-ended lease, so that means I have unlimited kilometers, can cancel at any time, um, but I am still limited with the factory warranty of only up to 80,000 kilometers, and I'm currently sitting at, I believe it's like 75 or 76,000 kilometers, and I'm just over the halfway mark in my lease. So, which means I'm gonna run out of kilometers well before I run out of the four years that come from the factory. So getting an extended warranty was something that was on my mind when I first purchased my 2019 Range Rover back in May of 2019. However, for one reason or another, the dealership didn't bother to sell me one. But luckily, I was able to get into a very, very, very good extended warranty at uh, pretty much the same cost I would have got it back then. I'm gonna miss out on one perk, which is kind of a bummer, but it's not a deal breaker by any means. So boiling back to the question, should you be looking at an extended warranty? Here's the fact of the matter. Um, when I purchased the new vehicle, I didn't, well, I purchased a new vehicle for one of the main reasons was I was just tired of dealing with mechanics and, and what goes along with having an older vehicle. So I just wanted one place that I could take my, my vehicle to and have it fixed. And for the most part, it'd be no out of pocket expenses for me. Um, I wanted to continue that as long as I had the vehicle. It's no secret that Range Rovers and, and any luxury, high-end luxury vehicle is gonna have very costly repairs when things go wrong, as they sometimes do go wrong. Um, I wanted to make sure I was gonna be covered. So seeing the, weighing the cost and the cost of the warranty and what I was looking for, it was a no brainer for me to go with an extended warranty. So this is really a personal decision you have to make to see, do you wanna just you know, roll the dice, so to speak, and just hope that nothing goes wrong. Or if something goes wrong, it's only gonna be a thousand or two thousand dollars to repair. But what if a torsion bar goes wrong and it's like, you know, six, seven thousand um, dollar repair, right? And that kind of rolls into my second point, and that's really just knowing your vehicle, right? Um, I've had this thing since 27 kilometers were on the odometer and uh, we're sitting at under 80,000 kilometers now. I know when things are working, when things are on the fritz or whatever the case is, you know, fingers crossed this has been a rock solid vehicle for me with very little issues. Now, I do know, however, the weak points of this rig. Um, the front suspension components. I've replaced bushings. Um, I think I've replaced all four front um, bushings. Just doing a little creaking and cracking. Um, the starter, but that's a whole nother topic. Um, but uh, they also replaced, it was something else in the front passenger side that had to do with the suspension component again. So the suspension is the main concern that I have for this vehicle. Everything else has been pretty solid. A couple like little hiccups here and there, the door sensor on my door st stopped working. So, um, so they just had to order a new part. But the big things that I didn't wanna have to pay out of pocket were gonna be suspension components. So I take that into account when looking at the price of the warranty and literally what I was doing with the service manager at the time I was pricing through all the things that I've had to, that have been replaced under warranty and getting the cost for all of them because they're usually not on your work order. He was nice enough to show me the costs of them and uh, you know, they knew my vehicle pretty well. So they were able to determine it's like, no man, for the cost of the extended warranty, just under $5,000, it's kind of a no brainer for you to go with it. And um, 
for me, for me personally, you know, looking at that decision, I thought, yeah, you know what? I know what I'm doing with it. I'm a little rough with it, not the gentlest driver. Um, yeah, I, I want that peace of mind knowing that if something does go wrong, I can just bring it into the dealership, have them fix it under the warranty or the extended warranty and not have to, not have to pay anything except for your, the 200 buck deductible, which is nothing. So for me, that was a no brainer. And that's one of the reasons I ended up going with the extended warranty. Um, but some of you might, one, not be driving as many kilometers, or you might um, just have an on-road Range Rover. But it's your decision. It's okay. Um, you know, so uh, wear and tear might be a lot less, and that's totally cool. Another big thing was this. I'm at 80,000 kilometers. I figure I'm going to return the lease at 120,000. Right, so I got my extended warranty up to 120,000 kilometers. Between that 80,000 and 120,000 is a year and a half, and I know that's a you know that's a decent amount of kilometers uh, in that time. Um, the chances of something going wrong, the older the vehicle gets, your chances just go higher. So once again, the you know the cost, the risk, you know the risk was way higher than the cost for me, and uh, and that's. Hence why I came to this decision. Now, what ex extended warranty you can get? So I'm going to break this down as simple as possible because I did find one big, uh, I don't want to call it a red flag with one of the third party ones, but um, first off, Land Rover, JLR, they do not sell extended warranties anymore. They stopped doing that a few years ago. They only offer you the four year, 80,000 80, kilometer factory warranty you get when you purchase your new vehicle. They no longer offer extended warranties from JLR. However, they have these. Pretty much all the dealerships in North America are gonna have this brochure. This is a Land Rover um, extended warranty. However, it's underwritten by a, a company called LGM. So LGM, it's, it is a third party. Um, extended warranty company that underwrites all of Land Rover's extended warranties. That is why you get Land Rover branded brochures compared to actual third party ones that JLR does not actually um, work with on a large scale. These are just your regular third party uh, extended warranty companies like Avantigard, for example. Now, I want to talk about some of the advantages going with we're just going to call it the JLR one versus other third parties and third party warranties are going to be sig usually significantly cheaper um, by, you know, a thousand to two thousand dollars. So not significantly, I guess, but they do tend to be cheaper than the factory branded ones um, for obvious reasons. But it also does mean you can run into a few more hiccups on what's gonna be covered and repaired with extended warranties than you will this one. This one is almost, not 100%, it's almost identical to the factory warranty that comes um, when you get a brand new vehicle. There are some very, very slight exclusions, but things that I just could care less about um, because the cost of fixing them is so small that it's like whatever. Um, but I wanna talk about one of the things that I found in the third party that was not covered, that's covered in the JLR one. And that's actually the, it's a, it was a suspension component because the biggest thing I was concerned about was, is my suspension, are my suspension components going to be covered? And so what I did is I looked under suspension for the third party one and I saw, yeah, upper lower control arms, control arm shafts, upper lower ball joints, stabilizer shafts, linkage, torsion bar, that thing I talked about that's pricey, um, you know, going through all of this. And like I said, comment down below, what was the one com suspension component I've replaced multiple times already? Comment down below right now. There's no emoji for that one, but the bushings, right? The little rubber bushings. Um, and if you go down here, down to non-covered components, bushings are listed as a non-covered component. And when bushings go, all you hear is ee, 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 every single time your freaking suspension's going over an uneven road. 
um, most embarrassing thing in the world. Whereas, taking a look at the Land Rover branded one, I have where the suspension components. Suspension components. Front and rear suspension, bearings or bushings, radius arms and bushings, torsion bars, mounts or bushings, stabilizer bars, linkage and bushings. <laughs> bushings is listed all over the map. And that was one of the things that I've had to replace. And so automatically I was like, man, this thing is so much better than going with the third party ones. Now the girl um, at one of the dealerships who sold me this also, after I finally got it out of her, said, no, yeah, sometimes we run into issues with people filing warranty claims with third party companies like Avantagard. I was like, well, next time you should lead with that. Jeez, and save, save, the, save you know, people the headache of having to make a decision. Just say, yeah, third party ones suck most of the time. They can you know, cause you more issues and, and, and whatnot. So anyways, long story short, hopefully this video made sense, but this is one of the reasons I went with um, the LGM, the Land Rover branded um, third party one. I just wanted protection that was gonna be as close to factory as possible. There are the exclusions for this one. Um, exclusions. Uh, so the key fob, it's wh whatever, um, non-factory audio equipment, not an issue, uh, tire pressures or tire pressure sensors, um, and maintenance related items, which is not covered under your regular warranty anyways, and cosmetic items, which are only covered for your first year or 20,000 kilometer um, deal anyways, which is, um, Right, so you see really the, the stuff that is not covered is like, who cares? Okay, and I just remembered what, one other thing that is covered in the JLR branded warranty that's not covered in the Avantagard third-party warranty or most third-party warranties, airbags. So they have a whole system or a whole uh, section of under the non-covered components, airbags and sensors, um, SRS systems and airbags are covered right here under the prestige plan so not their premium their prestige is the highest one um, but airbags are covered so that's just another reason why you want to go with um you know as close to factory as possible keeping with the the Land Rover branded um, extended warranty. So hopefully that made sense to everybody, but uh, let me know if you have any comments or questions about this topic. Like I said, I'm not an expert by any means, guys. I'm just somebody who, who's, who loves the brand, who loves doing his thing, and just wants to share his experiences through the camera um, you know, w with you so you can make better, more informed decisions and you can just enjoy your Range Rover, Land Rover, whatever it is, Defender, uh, whatever it is, um, a little bit more. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button. Love seeing those. Boost the ego. And uh, please consider subscribing. Until next time, everybody, I'm Mecca. Let me know what you are driving home.